All right. Now we're going. Now we're going live in just a few seconds. All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm Keith the Stone, your host for the Cosmos Society Online Open House Series, um, a production of the Harvard University Center for Hellenic Studies. Our guest today is Dr. Angela Chinali, who um, earned her PhD in history and philosophy, sorry, philology of the ancient world from La Sapienza University of Rome. And she is a Marie Swodowska career researcher at back at La Sapienza after being other places for a little while. Um, and that, that fellowship is um, co-sponsored, co-organized by our own Center for Linux Studies. Um, I'd like to mention, since it's one of my favorite fields, she's a trained epigrapher who works in the field on archeological excavations. And she'll be talking with us today about her current project having to do with itinerant professionals of the performing arts, the so-called Poeti Boganti, as attested in the epigraphic sources of the Hellenistic period. So, um, Angela, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And as I previewed for you, I'd like to ask you the normal question um, that I ask our guests, which is what um, first inspired your interest in the classical world? Thank you, Keith. And um, uh, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude to the community of the Cosmos Society. Uh, for welcoming me here today, and in particular to you uh, for the perfect organization of this discussion. And I hope you all are safe and good in this globally uh, challenging time. I am honored to participate in the online series, and I hope that this snake peek of the Hellenistic period that I will give um, can complete this already very assorted picture of this year Cosmos sex sessions. So back to your uh, question. When I was a child, as a child, I was always eager to know everything about the ancient world. And uh, so I chased after this um, uh, interest. Uh, attending the Italian Liceo Classico. There I had uh, wonderful teachers, as well as at uh, university, which I attended in uh, Chieti, which is a small uh, Ateneum, but uh, yet upfront. Um, and I um, got this degree in uh, uh, classics uh, with a um, particular focus on the uh, Libyan archeology span and history of art. And then I got my PhD at La Sapienza with uh, Maria Lizia Lazzarini and uh, Roberto Nicolai. And um, Roberto Nicolai, who is uh, my um, supervisor of my Marie Curie Fellowship, um, for, was, was the one to spot out the project on the Poeti Vaganti. Maybe um, he was thinking uh, I could put to good use my musical education that I uh, got at the Conservatorio Santa Cecilia here in Rome. And uh, so after my PhD, I uh, went to, I, I came to the US uh, at the Ohio State University and then at the Center for Hellenic Studies as a fellow. And uh, now I am a Marie Curie Fellow and uh, I am waiting actually to come back to the US um, when it would be possible. And throughout all these years, I also pursued a parallel um, path, let's say, which is the educational one. Because um, let's be sincere, um, academia is not always easy. Uh, it's not always easy to, um, to, to be, to, to keep uh, on track with, uh, um, with career and publication. So uh, I um, was a teacher at the Liceo Classico and the Liceo of Humanities for years. And I value very much this experience because I acquired my uh, tools um, on a human way and on a methodological way to approach students at different levels of education. So this is my experience. Wonderful, thank you. Sorry, I muted myself because of noise in the background, but um, thank you very much for sharing that. And you can probably hear it now in the background. So um, 
please begin and just start screen sharing your, your slides whenever you are ready. Okay. So I think it could be a good idea to um, uh, sketch an overview of my project, uh, of its structure, of some of its results, and then to take into consideration some uh, a bunch of inscriptions uh, by geographic area, so that we can have an idea of how epigraphic um, evidence allows us to reconsider one of the most understudied fields of the Hellenistic culture. I look forward to everyone's comments and questions and views. Um, so today I am going to invite you to focus on the uh, cultural landscape of the Hellenistic period, when a massive turnout of professionals of literatures, literature and, 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 and music took place in the main centers of the Hellenistic world. Um, these centers were prestigious displays for the artistic journey of performers. In this panorama, we find figures of um, cultural and public life, trained artists, enfants prodige, women, teachers, um, um, uh, professionals skilled in music of the avant-garde and of the tradition, and um, everybody uh, showing off in front of audiences gathered uh, for the occasion and enjoying the performance. In exchange, the host city granted to the artists honor, honors and privileges in approval of their activity in town and uh, carved these um, um, rewards on the stone, keeping testimony of their endeavors. So um, I will share my screen and uh, go to the uh, presentation of my PowerPoint so that you can, we can go to the tick of the research. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is um, um, the um, theoretic framework of the research that I um, figured out after years of, of the study and research. And, um, uh, you know, the phenomenon of the poetic vaganti is mainly attested by um, the epigraphic sources, as we said. Uh, honorary decrees, proxeny decrees, um, statue bases, dedications, um, celebratory and funerary epigrams. Sometimes these sources are validated by literature. These sources offer, offer us um, um, draw a movement on the move. And um, the nature of this movement can be uh, captured uh, by uh, the, um, an expression that I found very interesting in the uh, epigram that you can find at the right of the screen, if you can see it. And uh, it is an epigram for um, a herald uh, from Tanagra. Uh, this herald, Foristas, is said to have participated to the um, agones, to the competitions, with winged feet, Ptanois Posin. Of course, um, this is, um, I, I was surprised by the, the effectiveness of the image recalled by this expression, Ptanois Posin. And even though there could be here a shift of meaning, um, uh, um, because it could refer to the athletic um, resistance skills of the of an herald who could be trained for uh, for foot races, or also it could refer to the analogy of the herald with Hermes. Anyways, um, the winged feet artists spread culture trends, professionalism all over the Hellenistic Greece. And this phenomenon had a significant impact on the performative and cultural life of the Hellenistic centers and increased even more in the imperial era. While the imperial development was um, um, investigated at great length, the Hellenistic phase was at first examined uh, by Margherita Guarducci, who called them the Poeti Vaganti. And she opened up a new horizon in the study of the Hellenistic world. 
in part the publication, the idea of uh, the arts on, of the, on, on the move melted into the study of performing arts, focusing on particular aspects or personalities. A thorough collection of the testimonies rich in quantity and quality of data provided needs to be organized on a thematic and geographic basis. And consequently, um, it needs to be uh, interpreted and described in order to draw the picture of a phenomenon mm, to, to some extent, uh, let's say popular to use the word of, the, of uh, Pantuzzi and Gentili. And this phenomenon ran parallelly to the court literature and deeply impacted on history, culture, and society of the Hellenism. And this is basically the goal of my research. So the core of my study is the idea of the arts on the move that finds its uh, ratio in the travel and uh, in the ik et nunc performance. In fact, the poeti vaganti expression, which has become the common one to indicate this phenomenon, cannot represent accurately the sense of the artistic travel. Uh, because the source indicate a deliberate journey rather than a wandering one throughout the Hellenistic centers. The focal questions that this study asks are uh, broken down further into thematic platforms tracing the connections between performative and itinerant patterns and fall under two broad topics embracing the um, uh, transversal and interdisciplinary nature of this project, the space of the Hellenistic world and the narrative of the arts on the move. The definition of this key approach is due to the contribution of the digital humanities uh, that offered um, um, an overview, a vision uh, in uh, uh, spotting out the uh, core of the project. An online presence, in fact, is um, of the research is ongoing with uh, in, in collaboration with the IT staff of the Center for Hellenic Studies in the frame of my Marie Curie project. Um, setting up the digital out output has led me to speculate deeply at defining the cornerstones of the project. The ones that seem to work as big conceptual boxes, <laughs> let's call boxes, them, uh, interacting together and encompassing um, um, transversal patterns also are travel, travelers, and performance, as you can see from the, the, the screen. Um, as for performance, a distinguo is needed between the extra agonistic performances, uh, acroases, epideixes, uh, anagnoses, and competitions, local and the panhellenic ones. The agones are further crucial tessere of this cultural mosaic and cross another major pattern, the one of the artistic guilds of the technitae. Itinerant artists used competitions as uh, a shortcut to fame, to use the words of Lucian, um, or to um, strengthen their reputation. Depending on the areas, we can observe that victors um, and participants of, to the Agones are also individually reminded in inscriptions for additionally um, artistic of public activity. Uh, so the three categories that I pointed out, uh, the performance, travel and travelers, seem, seem to be useful to interpret the big data on a quantity basis, but the epigraphic documents need also to be organized by quality of information in order to achieve an overview. So now I think that I, in order to exemplify what I just said about the theo theoretic framework of the research, it can be useful to get into the peak of the research focusing on uh, two particular uh, and very dynamic uh, interconnected spaces of the Hellenistic world, which are Delos and Delphi. The results of my investigation on extra agonistic and, and inscriptions 
and catalogues of the Agones have shown an, the existence of an artistic circuit between Delphi and Delos that involved also Athens. This, this seems to be a segment of a wider artistic journey along which the virtuosi of the Hellenistic period used to travel. The Loci Apollinei route appears as the most experienced though, though. We have catalogues and decrees showing that performers used to attend artistic appointments in both Delphi and Delos. And uh, uh, also the artistic environments of Delphi and Delos share the same principle, which necessarily is, uh, it, it consists on the sacred nature of both places emerging um, in all their cultural and performative life. The praise of the God is the common theme conveying in all performances and in particular in the activity of the itinerant virtuosi chosen for the sacred occasions uh, arranged by the cities. Uh, beside this and further affinities, the performative life evolves in different ways, though, uh, as you can see from the, uh, the, the screen. There are common themes, but they evolve differently. Um, even though the lists of participants and uh, uh, victors at the contests uh, support us in reconstructing the impact of the turnover of artists uh, throughout the Hellenistic period, I have focused my attention on inscriptions of single performers. Um, through which we can gain valuable information on the performative life of both places. So the inscriptions have been organized, taking into consideration the, the quality of information. And so form and content of the performance, typology of the performance, and the combination of both aspects. The Delphian artistic environment discloses an extremely dynamic cultural life and an intense turnout of professionals granted epigraphic memory, not only for their performative activity, but also for public and diplomatic responsibilities. A less rich and yet substantial documentation uh, arrives from, uh, from, from Delos, um, uh, where, where we have a different pattern because um, the professionals arrive in, on the island for artistic and public duties, but uh, there is a pattern, the Athenian domination, whose, uh, whose impact uh, had a strong influence on the artistic expression of, on, of the poeti vaganti dwelling on on, on the island. The extragonistic demonstration of artistic skills is obtained in both places through acroases um, and public readings or of mm, traditional or new compositions. And the epideixes instead, they suit to the Delphian environment, often applies apply to performances in the gymnasium and are connected with the educational sphere. Now, I would like to walk you all through some inscriptions that you also had in the preparatory readings so that we can finally zoom into the research. And I will try to describe the performative life of both cities. So I will start, start, start from Delphi. Um, between the middle and the end of the second century BC, two couples of artists coming, coming from Aigeira and Phaneus testify to this and to the will to strengthen um, tradition and local heritage through art. Even casting a glance at the documents that you see, the parallel elements appear very clear. Both are pairs of uh, musicoi possessing the techne rather than the episteme of music. Accordingly, they can play proficiently, but their skills in composing music are not declared. 
Furthermore, there, uh, they are called to repropose uh, through their epidexis the poetic heritage, specifically what of the archaic poetry is um, um, decent and appropriate to Apollo and Delphi in different ways though. The first pair from Aigeira makes a display of harmony, ton luricon sustemata. I can see the text because I have, okay. No. Uh, ton luricon sustemata that you can find in the text. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know why. It's not working. Um, there is some problem with my presentation. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. uh, Kit, it's blocked. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay. So you were unable to navigate within your presentation. Oh. Sarah, would you mind starting up uh, the presentation? Did you get the copy of it? Yeah, unfortunately, I have a technical issue my end with it. Um, so oh, okay. I don't think I can. Sorry. Okay. Um... Let me see if I can. Let's see here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to share the screen again. Uh, can you see it now? Mm -hmm. I can see your screen. Okay, and... Uh, so far, so good. Can you? Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope that... Yeah, okay. Now it's working. I'm sorry okay. for the inconvenience. These, thing, <laughs> these <laughs> yeah. things happen. <laughs> okay, uh, so I was saying that um, these two inscriptions are um, parallel and also very similar. So for these two pairs of siblings from Aigera and from Fenius. And um, their um, epidexes are similar, but um, uh, they achieve the praise of the god and of the city in different ways. The um, Luricon Systemata, as you can see here, the Aton Luricon Systemata, uh, here and uh, um, the first pair. And uh, then you have the Artas Musicas Tecnas, Epideixis, the Artas Musicas Tecnas, um, Prosferomenoi uh, Arithmus, Ton Archaion Poietan. So you can see um, uh, for the Luricon Systemata, um, the, the siblings selected the most um, the most suitable um, um, systemata on the layer that were suitable to, to tradition. And the, the latter, uh, latter uh, pair reaches the same outcome focusing on the rhythmic aspects, the arithmoi of text and music. In the decree for the siblings from uh, Fenius, it is also stressed the educational validity of their presence at Delphi. Uh, because you can see there, there that they um, delivered a didascalia for the Pires. And um, um, so they uh, appear to be um, to be uh, at the center of the performative life and of the educational life in this latter case. So the demonstrations, as you can see, the epidexes are applied to the educational sphere, too. Um, um, so. Through these two very similar inscriptions, we are allied, allowed to, to, to stress some points. The two Delphian texts show technical lexicon that is connected with the musical appropriateness. And uh, the ancient poets are recalled insofar as they are suitable to Apollo in the city. And uh, um, this element um, is uh, connected to localism, to cultural heritage that is uh, very 
pointed in the localism. And, um, and then uh, the uh, other um, pattern is the connection to the teaching commitment. Um, so here we cast a glance to the use of the music as a tradition, uh, but um, just just as you know, uh, that you know, in, in Delphi there also were representatives of the avant-garde. For example, uh, um, of the Eudralis. Um, um, or of other um, um, professionalities like um, the Magodia. Um, but performances insisting on the theme of the local heritage can represent the conjunction between artistic and public activity for intellectuals committed both to art and public life. And this is the case of Hermocles from Chios. He was a hieromnemon and poet, composing a hymn and uh, apologismos delivered in front of the ecclesia. The complex activity of this uh, Hermocles is documented by this decree that you um, can see on the screen and um, which records his achievements uh, but also his activity as Hieromnemon uh, in, um, um, uh, in Delphi uh, for the first annual gathering of the Amphixion, where he celebrated the sacrifices and uh, he took also active part to the Theoxenia, mixing the wine in a silver bowl. This uh, seemed the most important actions revolving around his principal diplomatic role in Delphi, but also he pursued an, um, as an activity as a poet um, through the composition of a hymn and um, apologismos delivered in front of the ecclesia. Mm, let's say that we could speculate further about the um, uh, reason uh, that led him uh, to um, do this apologismos um, and uh, to connect uh, mythologically the uh, tales of uh, Chios and Delphi. But uh, maybe another, another time we can do this because the um, discourse is, uh, is quite, is quite uh, complex. Uh, and we prefer now to go uh, farther and to see instead um, another, um, another document here for uh, Cleocares. Um, Cleocares uh, coming from Athens and he is a poet as Melon and um, Delphi awarded him the Laurel Crown and Praise, among other proxeny privileges, um, because he, um, during his stay in town, um, he stood out at the Delphian Theoxenia, whose sacrifice was enriched by the prosodion, paean, and hymn for Apollo written by him. And the chorus of Pides, instructed uh, by the annual Coro di Dascalos, performed these compositions. So as you can notice from the decree for Hermocles and this other one for Cleocares, we have two inscriptions that unveil typical executions and uh, use, uses of the Delphian Teoxenia. Um, another artist, this time charged by Delos, with the composition of a sacred piece, steps aside like Cleocares in order to let the young generation perform. This is the decree for Amphicles. Amphicles, he was a musicos, Caimelon Poietes, and he delivered acroases, multiple acroases, and also staged his own composition on the sacred aisle. First of all, he gave um, this um, um, acroasis uh, also in Oropos, as you can see. 
from this other section, segment of a decree that I um, uh, wrote down, because he was um, in Oropos in Beotia, and then he went to Delos, and there in, in both places he delivered a crisis, but in Delos he uh, stood out composing um, prosodion MLS. Now here the lexicon of the inscription is very, um, uh, very high here, and um, um, he wrote the prosodion to please to him not anymore only the gods of the island, but also the restored master, masters of the island, the Athenians. Besides the role of uh, author, Amphicles had also training responsibilities because he was charged by the um, police um, of uh, instructing instructing the Pides uh, Politon in singing the melody, Tomelos, the musical line. In this occasion, Amphicles worked as a Corridascalos himself. Uh, and this is a difference between, bet between him and Cleocares. Uh, but the educational responsibilities in uh, um, instructing the citizens sounds seem implied. Actually, the role appears as a high privilege um, because Cleocare, Cleocares had to step aside from the Theoxenia. And he instead, this Amphicles, was charged by the town to step into the life, to instruct the Pides. So there is a difference here. And also maybe it could refer to the different statues of uh, the performers, of the artists. Um, and also of uh, maybe a common use of the police. Um, so we have a, with Amphicles a multiple talented artist, presumably a distinguished one whose artistic eater from Beotia ends up in Delos. Um, it seems that the documents for Amphicles are a sort of a climax of visibility, no? Because in Beosia we only have the Acroases, and then in Delos he is charged with the composition too. So he uh, not only was skilled with the techne of music, but also with the episteme of it. Um, along the route, of uh, um, Delos and Delphi, we can find other personalities, uh, women, for example, for example, chaperoned or not, teams um, uh, traveling together, and also enfant prodige. And on the enfant prodige, I would like to um, shed some light through the um, decree for uh, this Apollonius uh, that you can see below on the screen. And uh, he came to celebrate in a hymn, maybe or not, uh, the immortals of the celestial sphere as the parasemon of the stele indicates because atop of the stele of this Apollonius there um, that was found in the Serapeion B, uh, there is a sun, a star, and a sickle moon. And Robert, um, according to these clues, um, reconstructed the connection of Apollonius uh, with the Egyptian divinities through uh, mythological and uh, uh, astrological themes. Um, actually, uh, I went further with the research just in, in these days, and I found other connection to the Egyptian sphere through his mother, Mayandria, whom we can find in another dedication for uh, Isis, and um, so maybe she is connected too with the Egyptian sphere. And also this is a pattern that is uh, uh, typical, that is a peculiar, particular uh, in Delos. It, it features only the, this island, the Egy Egyptian pattern, because in this island we have an astrologos, 
And also we have um, an oneirocrites. Uh, and nowhere else we can find these specialties. Of course, they are not, um, they cannot be uh, called artists of uh, music and literature, of course, but uh, they had to be skilled in, uh, uh, in the art of words no? to accomplish their, their, religious, um, their religious functions. So um, um, one, one point that we have to, to make is about the, uh, about the, the nature of Delos that we are already mentioned, because uh, Delos was always influenced by the Athenaeans, the, the, Athenaeans, the Longa Manus of the Athenaeans, uh, because the social, economic, architectural, and cultural structures structure of Delos um, focused uh, altogether on the sanctuary of Apollo, but the Athenaean influence uh, enhanced this religious imprint during the domination and um, influenced, impacted in a very strong way in, on the history of the island. And uh, um, um, we, we can say that the documentation on the Poeti Vaganti and the situation of Delos, of independence before and of subjection to the Athenians um, later, see eye to eye. Um, during the independence, we have a um, number like 500 decrees of proxeny, and 20 of them are um, uh, granted to the uh, artists and intellectuals. Um, among them, we can find, for example, the famous Praxifanes um, from Mytilene, or the historiographer uh, Nesiptolemos from Kime. Um, during the first decade of the third century, we um, can find this Demotele from Andros, uh, who sang the praises of the sanctuary, treating the topic of the uh, sanctuary and uh, of the police, writing on lo local mites, the uh, mutoi epicorii, the local tales, just a few decades after the, procl the proclamation of the independence, in order to strengthen the positive relations between Delos and his homeland. It is interesting how the narration changed during the Athenaian domination. And we already saw it through the decree of the Musicos Amphicles. But another testimony of it is for another Pais, another Enfant Prodige, who is called Ariston. You can, it's the second decree here. And um, this Ariston from Focea is one of more testimony um, of, uh, of, um, of Pyrus no? uh, in Delos, but also we have them in Delphi. So it's a pattern that uh, goes along and, and matches in, in, in both places. So, and, and it also, um, it gives us the clue that maybe it was a category that had very much success. Um, although the structure of the sentence here of the inscription um, is uh, blurry because there are many missing parts, um, we can say that he delivered several acroases in the Ecclesiasterion and the, in the theater and uh, um, supposedly on traditional pièces. And then he gave further demonstrations on his uh, skills in composition. Um, but different from Amphicles, he uh, composed um, Encomia. Uh, and during his stay, he gave an agnosis of this uh, Encomia. And um, at the uh, start of the, uh, in, in, at line uh, four and five, he is called Poietes Sepon. So these clues uh, allow us to um, point 
out on uh, his expertise, which is the encomium epicon. And this is um, this can be considered a sort of de development of the hymns for the gods and heroes. And uh, also, um, it is a um, it is uh, um, uh, the, the, the poetic encomia are um, um, protagonists in the Beotian Agones, where um, they were used to praise the gods of the festivals and the Romans. So it makes perfect sense that the composition of Ariston extolled the religious and politic masters of Delos, because we, here we have the Archegetes, the other gods of the islands, and the island and the Athenians as well. So we can see the difference between the period of the independence and the Athenian domination, how the decrees change. And we can see here also an historical pattern that we have to, to, to follow to read correctly these documents. One last couple, I swear, <laughs> of documents <laughs> are, um, I would like to propose is um, uh, the, uh, the, ones, the one of um, concerning uh, Satyros, Satyros from Samos, a friend of mine, because <laughs> he um, was um, a protagonist of my study um, and I, I love very much studying him. Actually, I am going uh, uh, on studying him because um, he he is uh, uh, full of surprises. And um, so let's say that he went to Delphi and Delos. That, that, that is why I chose him, because it's a perfect example of an artist following the route, the Apollinian route. And uh, he's a um, multiple talented artist, um, as we will see. And he uh, went to Delos and uh, in Delos, uh, this is remarkable because he obtained a statue. And only another uh, artist obtains the statue, nobody else. So this is big deal, actually. The same in Delphi. And in Delphi, um, it is um, what is um, narrated by the inscription is very peculiar, is very particular. Satyrus from Samos, son of Eumenes, it happened to him for the first time to play the aulos alone without competitors at the Agon and being regarded worthy to offer to the God and the Greeks after the athletic contest during the sacrifice in the Pythian Stadium, the Dionysus song with the chorus and the song on the guitar from the Bacche of Euripides. So a few lines of inscriptions, but so many information. We uh, see this artist, that he was maybe a renowned artist already. He went to Delphi to participate, maybe uh, to the pizza. And uh, he found himself competing alone because uh, nobody was contesting in that edition. And so already this is a surprise. This is something that mm, is uh, uncommon. And uh, nonetheless, he could put to good use this unexpected situation and stay in town to offer more of his art at one of the most relevant Panhellenic displays, the sacrifice of the Pizian Festival. There he performed uh, two pièces de repertoire for which the inscription stresses out the prominence of his vocal role, the asthma, Metacoru, named Dionysus, and um, it could be maybe a song of tradition, and the guitarisma from uh, the Bacche of Euripides as a solo performance. And uh, for the guitarisma, uh, Satyros proposed the, to the audience an Euripidean, an Euripidean performance, a revival, uh, sung on the strings. And this is very uh, particular because uh, it gives us also the, um, it, 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 uh, it, it allows us also to cast a glance 
uh, to the world of the performances and also uh, of how Euripides was still appreciated in, in the middle of the second century BC. Um, then I, I had other <laughs> things to, uh, to, 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 to say, but I don't know, maybe I can stop here because um, there, uh, mm -hmm. there is something else. I don't know. Um, just let Yeah, me... this might be a good spot for question at the very least. Okay. Um, does anyone have some, a question? You know, I have, I have some, but uh, speak right up because I can't, I can't see you all at the moment. In fact, I'm going to stop the screen share for a moment so that we can all. Oh yes, yeah, um, I have one. Be seen here. Go ahead, Evan. Uh, I was wondering, could you uh, first thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, um, mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you, could you tell us maybe more about Polygnota from Thebes and and the, the role of uh, women in. Uh, yeah, uh, Polygnota from Thebes is one of the women that we find in Delphi, together with another Coropsaltria from Kime. And um, Polygnota um, was a protagonist of uh, another uh, uncommon um, episode because she went to Delphi to perform the pizza too. And uh, um, owing to the Mithridatic War, she um, could not compete. But uh, the city asked her to uh, dwell in Delphi for some days, and she uh, gave uh, more of uh, so some of her art. Actually, uh, if I recall well, she offered one day, and then she uh, performed in uh, the, um, um, the, the, the middle way uh, Kermes. I don't know if you had the chance to read my uh, CHS article uh, on Delphi, um, uh, where I collected some decrees of uh, coming from Delphi, and where I um, tried to interpret the uh, to interpret the um, verb agonizomai, um, not as a participation to um, a proper agon, but to a um, convention with spirit of. Um, competition that we also can find maybe in Delos. We uh, can connect Delos and Delphi also through this other pattern because we have uh, maybe these con conventions, uh, this demonstrative uh, yet uh, uh, with the spirit of competition conventions also in Delos. And Polygnota was a protagonist of them together with Antipatros, the Eudralis, and um, two uh, performers of the drama. And uh, now I don't recall that mm, there are others. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lenny. I'm sorry I didn't see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying this very much. <laughs> Lenny, glad you could join us. Are there any other questions? Well, I've got one. Um, it's about the compositions. Um, were they composed specifically for each place um, and each occasion, or are there spatial references to here and now that um, would let a song be used in more than one place? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for, the, the, for this question. Very interesting. Um, no, they seem to be for the majority, um, local compositions. I mean, they have a local pattern that um, is a fil rouge. For example, um, we see that performers um, composing for um, um, Delos, for Delphi, also for um, the Beotia, um, Acroasis, they um, have a specific pattern following the local tales, and uh, sometimes they try to connect their homeland to the uh, host city. 
So um, it's all, all, always very local. Thank you. Claudie, go ahead. Um, thank you, Angela, for an excellent presentation. When you talk about enfant prodige, Pidus, what age range do you have in mind? In my mind, I have about eight to 12 or even 14. Can it, can it start earlier than that? Uh, thank you for your question. This is um, um, an issue that I have been trying to, to face, but mm. I don't think that with the epigraphic testimonies, I can come up with something useful because they are called generally pilots. So mm. I don't know, maybe I could investigate some more um, um, comparing their performances to the age, to the education, I mean, no? To what um, at school they used to learn and maybe try to, to see if I can come up with something, but um, I don't know. Because these pilots, Enfant Prodige, were also Vaganti. Yes, some of them. We have three. So they had to be old enough, really. Or maybe they uh, were chaperoned. Chaperoned. Yeah, yeah. Yes. like the, the women. Mm. Uh, because, for example, for um, uh, Beotian, um, pies from Skepsis in Delphi, I think we have also mention of his father. Mm. Uh, but for the others in Delos, no. Uh, but uh, okay, for um, the Apollonius that I mentioned before, there is the mother. So yes, they were with, with family clearly. Yeah. So they could they could have been very young. Yeah, mm. yeah. It could it could have been also. Mm. Uh, I think that also the choruses of Pides performing in the city uh, were very young. I mean, the Pides Politon, uh, trained by the, the um, Poeti Vaganti. And uh, yes, I, I will try to, 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 to grasp something <laughs> and I will let you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. To, to this point about the young performer, or sorry, the, the choral performers, yeah. um, are they, um, also given awards or recognition in the way that these people um, in the collection of inscriptions that you gave to us, you know, um, privileges in the cities. Mm -hmm. Are there su such inscriptions as well? Yeah. Um, okay, for the Pides Politon, we have um, only catalogs. Um, for, I mean, for Delos, we have catalogs for the festivals of the uh, Apollonia, where they were, um, uh, they, they participated, uh, but we haven't, haven't got inscriptions um, um, with um, rewards for them. Uh, we know that they were rewarded in some ways, um, but they didn't have a proper decree. The Enfant Prodige that instead were mentioned in the inscriptions, they were stars, they were VIPs. And this is why they were already famous. And this is why they were rewarded with high honors. If you compare the honors mm, uh, granted to Ariston in Delos, you can see that they are um, only given to the top players. And so they, they were a big deal in the city, actually. I wonder, I have a, a question related to some of what you've just been talking about, that a couple of them, I think, are mentioned as with their name and then son of somebody. And I wondered, you may not have evidence from the, these inscriptions, but I wondered if there might have been musical families, much as we see in some of the athletic contests, the, those families, athletes. Um, maybe there's no evidence for that, but that may be where the the children then come come up and learn their craft from their, their father or uncle or whatever. 
Uh, okay, in, um, thank you for this question because this allows me to um, make a point also on the on a very important pattern that crosses this uh, this research, which is the one of the guilds of the technique. And uh, the, the guilds, as far as they are recorded, they have, um, they have artistic families traveling together and performing in the same um, festivals. In Beozia, it's full of them. And uh, there is a, a very interesting book of Alessandra Manieri, who gives tables recording um, all the uh, artists uh, um, uh, playing in uh, Beozian festivals, and she finds uh, many artistic families. I detected many of them also in uh, Delphi and Delos, but um, um, Delphi is more uh, um, focused on uh, the festivals of the Soteria. Amphictionic Soteria, where we have um, lists of uh, participants and victors that allow us to have an um, overview of what it was. And also there, there were families, but when we have a family, we can be certain that they are linked, tied up to a guild of Technitae. Right, thank you and organizing the festival, participating in the organization of a festival. I have a question. Uh, thank you very much for this beautiful uh, presentation. Do you have any failure uh, stories uh, in Algons? Any? Any fa failure stories? Oh, yeah. Anybody? <laughs> yes. Yes, um, okay, epigraphic um, uh, evidence um, does not give us the um, reality, no, because we have only stories of success, of course, no? Um, the honorary and proxeny decrees and also the, the catalogs or the epigrams are all, all, all celebratory. So from the epigraphic evidence, we cannot mm, detect failures. Only awkward situations like the one of uh, Satyros or Polynota. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is the counterpart in the inscription, no? Uh, she, he competed alone, but he had great success. She went there for the pizza uh, and she couldn't compete for the Mithridatic uh, war, but she had great success um, as well. Uh, the literary sources here are very helpful because, um, for example, for the pizza, we have some uh, uh, very funny uh, experience of, uh, um, um, of um, an artist I recall, and he is mentioned by Lucian. I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and, and I'm sorry if I am mistaken, but uh, they talk about this uh, um, performer who went to Delphi to participate at the pizza, uh, all dressed up in gold and gems, uh, because he had uh, um, uh, Sico fans who, told him uh, that he was strong, that he could perform in any uh, category and he, that he could do anything. So he decided not to perform, uh, not to um, compete in the athletic agon, but in the um, musical one with the guitar. And we, he went to the guitar with gold, uh, and the guitar also was decorated with gold and gems. And when he started to sing and play, the melody was so um, awful that all the public, uh, all the theater, fall <laughs> for in laugh. And uh, so uh, the Mastigo Foroi, uh, who were, let's say, the police of uh, the ancient festivals, they went there and uh, he, they, they um, uh, gave him 
whiplashes. <laughs> And so he, he had to abandon the stage. And also there is um, a researcher who thought that this episode was uh, connected to Nero. Uh, to Nero, yes. Uh, and, uh, but, but okay, there is not evidence. Maybe it's um, only, you know, that there are no other clues. But yes, this is, um, a very famous story of failure, yes. There are few, but they are very, <laughs> very nice. Anybody else? We have time maybe for one more question um, before we wrap it up. Lenny, how about you? You don't join us very well. Oh, Aileen, I see. Oh, so I just have, have a, a small question. It's about the, uh, it's concerning Satiros uh, competing with the Olos. Do, do we have information about the type of Olos he played with? Or was, yes. Um, yes, uh, there is a study of mine published in um, the um, uh, Goni Musicali della Grecia Antica. And I tried to reconstruct the um, the category in which he performed. And I think that he um, could perform in the, with the Aulos Piticos, which is um, a very uh, particular category uh, tied up only to Delphi and to the pizza. And this, uh, this uh, Aulos Piticos um, was, um, um, was, was um, very Delphian because uh, um, it had to reconstruct through the Nomos Piticos the uh, victory of Apollo on, the, on Pito, on the serpent. And so uh, they were five sections of this nomos, and they were played by the guitarra and the aulos. Also, we have stories about uh, performers uh, deciding not to compete in, the, uh, in, this, uh, in this category because it was too difficult. And so only uh, performers that were uh, real virtuosi, they could do this. And also there is uh, some researcher that thinks that uh, Satiro found himself alone, competing alone, because nobody was able to do the nomos piticos. Uh, so this is it. Thank you, that's very interesting. Yeah. Well, Angela, thank you so much. That was fascinating. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for asking me. Thank you for asking me and thank you to the community, the Cosmos community. And also, I would like to take the occasion to thank Lenny, who is my supervisor at the Center for Hellenic Studies. And uh, he is uh, um, a very angel god, <laughs> a real angel god. And so thank you. you. Know, I, I, all the credit goes to you, Angela. You, you're doing wonderful things. That's such interesting material, too. And did you talk a little bit before I came on that about the project that we're trying to do? Yes. Uh, I think it's it's really amazingly interesting stuff, and I hope we'll have more understand more about how these people moved around and the paths that they took, and and yes. uh, should be a very productive uh, project. Keith, we can promise you. another another um, discussion when we will have a demo of the exactly. website, if you like. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that would be that great. Would be great. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. wonderful. Thank you. Thank All you right. so much. To Keep us posted. Okay, Bye. thanks to us for joining us as well. Bye Thank for you. now.